Zahra alayhi salam would begin to shake. And brothers and sisters, the difference between us and Sayyid Zahra is many differences. Of course, when it comes to Salah, we're sinners going towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We sin and we stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say our takbir. Sayyid Zahra alayhi salam is pure. إنما يريد الله ليذهب عنكم الرجس ويطهركم تطهيرا. So when it comes to say the Zahra Alisa, she stands in front of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. This pure soul, she still shakes. She shakes. She shakes because of the might of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Her son, I'm saying Habibin Alayhi Salam, and the narration say when he begins his wudu. His, his face becomes yellow and it becomes purple and he begins to change. His physical state changes after he looks at that water. He hasn't even reached Salah yet. He hasn't reached Takbir al-Ihram. For example, beautiful story from Al Khomeini. It's narrated in his lifetime. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with him. It's just in his soul. Al Khomeini was once sitting and he had a surgery. And before he was to begin the surgery, the doctor wanted to put anesthetic for him so he doesn't feel anything. And before he asks him what's in this anesthetic, and he tells him, and Imam Khomeini is, uh, is a mushtahid, and there was one of the ingredients within this anesthetic in the eyes of Imam Khomeini was haram. Now, even though when it comes to uh, surgery, you know, it's acceptable to Imam Khomeini says, no, I do not want this haram to mix. I don't want this haram to mix in my body with my soul. So he begins to pray. Now the prayer he used to do, he was praying, wasn't the salat and the five times a day. He began to do a dhikr. And he asked him, he asked him, how, how long do you need me to be in you know, the state of you know, being numb and uh, you know, uh, disconnected basically. He says, I need you to be gone for an hour and a half. And he began, he's like, okay, as soon as I fall asleep, you begin your surgery. So he begins to say, Ya Nu, Ya Nu, Ya Nu, falls asleep, then Ya Nu, Ya Nu. And then he falls asleep for the exact amount of time he wakes up and so he is finished. This is a dhikr. And we said two nights ago that the, the best form of dhikr is salat. Aqam is salat al dhikr. When Allah SWT is talking to Musa alayhi salam. Also, for example, when Ramza al Abidin alayhi salam, to show you how much they disconnect from this world. There is nothing more important to a father than his son. When it comes to the children, it's the red light for the parents. Imam Zayn al is yes, more important. But look at his actions. When he begins his salat, in front of him is his son, one of his sons. And he falls into a well, as the narration says. He falls into a well. And Imam Zayn al is salam continues his salat. It's as if nothing moved him. He didn't, didn't fade him. They're phasing what's up. So he finishes the salat and then his the mother of this tribe, so Ramzan one of his wives, she comes to him and says, Ma aqsa kulubukum ya bani Oh how hard your heart is. Your heart is as as, as rock as, as as hard as a stone, as a rock. And then he says, wait a second. Ramzan goes towards that world and he puts his hand up like this. And he begins to, you know. And then, as he does this, he waits, and then Allah SWT, of course, the power of Allah, his son is risen up, and he takes his son, and he gives him to his wife. He says, no, 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 our hearts are unhard. He says, but you, ma, ma, aqal, or ma, adha'afa, yaqeena. You do have, you have no yaqeena, you want to come and question my heart. You have no yaqeen in Allah SWT. I was disconnected from this world, but I was in a meeting with Allah, the one that created your son. I was, I was in a meeting with him. So the, the same way he gave me your son, he gave the same way he gave me my son, when I'm in, in a meeting with him, he will protect your son. Where is your faith? So when it comes to, you know, you hear all these stories and you know the importance of Salat and you know that your heart has to be, you know, because the Salat is a Mahraj and woman, it's where we ascend, our souls ascend towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. Tell, tell Muhammad, hey, we understand. We understand the importance of Salat. But someone come, might come and ask, I know all of this stuff, but why do I forget it? 
Why can't I implement it in my life? So now I want to come and pull forward to you. The most, the biggest problem we have when it comes to salah, and this is the truth, unfortunately, is there, there are certain things in our life that come and they stand in front of our connection towards Allah. So these obstacles, they prevent this salat and maqbura. They prevent this, this accepted salat. Like we said, we spoke about the, 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 the salat that we want. The salat that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. And the, the main thing, the main obstacle we have is our imagination. Our imagination, brothers and sisters, when does it begin to work? Our, imagine, our imagination's peak is when our senses stop. When you, when you stop using your senses, you freeze your senses, that's when your imagination, your, your, your imagination comes and says, okay, fine, and you've given me time, let me, use, let, me, let me come and begin imagining and thinking. That's why you find when you begin salah and you're not connected, you begin to think of the weirdest things. What if I choose? You know, this type of food with this type of food and I drink this type of drink with it, you know? And you start thinking of some weird things because as soon as you give, you give the imagination a string, it begins to hold on and it runs with that string. As soon as you give it a bit of space, it runs with it. So your imagination begins to play. And it's unfortunate. For example, you come and you, you, you smell a certain, a certain perfume or you hear a certain rhythm, a certain piece of music, even if, if, if it was an accident, you begin to think about that song within yourself subconsciously. Your imagination becomes to, it takes you, it takes you with this, with, with this, uh, this piece of music or this image that you have thought of or you've seen. So, the best way to switch off your imagination because let's face it, it's going to happen. As soon as you begin your, your salat, it's going to happen. Your imagination is going to take you. And there are two things that can pre prevent your imagination from doing its thing. Number one is actually giving your, imag your imagination, your mind, time to be free. So the ulama, the scholars, they give us, they give us a, a way of, of a solution for this. They say, before you want to begin your prayer, there's two things to do. Before you want to begin your prayer, number one, sit down on your prayer mat or where you want to say, you want, you, where you, where you want to solve it, where you want to pray. And before you do your takbir al just sit down and wait a couple of minutes, two, three minutes, four minutes. Free your mind. Let it think. Let it go and, you know, build mansions and, you know, eat whatever it wants and listen to whatever it wants. Let your imagination go free. Let it go wild. And then once it bit stops, that's when you get up and you say, Allah, this is your time. And then you say, Allah. Because let's face it, if I'm going to be sitting here talking, having a conversation with my friend, you know, we're sitting there playing, talking about FIFA or Call of Duty, you know, Allah, and then, and then say, Allahu Akbar, Bismillah Akbar, I'm going to be thinking about Call of Duty, I'm going to be thinking about FIFA. You know, I'm going to be thinking about what I was talking about. I haven't given my mind time to reset. I haven't given my imagination time to... Clear up and just for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's one way. Another beautiful way, and this is actually, I found this very useful in my younger years, is when it comes to salah, give it a certain time of the day. For example, Dhuhr comes, Salat al Dhuhr al Asr, you say, okay, Dhuhr al Asr has come, it's time for Dhuhr al Asr, I have 10 minutes or 15 minutes or 20 minutes, I am not allowed to do anything. In these 20 minutes, besides sit on the prayer mat. Even if I finish the salah. Even if I don't finish the salah. I have 20 minutes, I have to sit on this prayer mat. Of course, you're going to finish in 20 minutes. In these 20 minutes, I finish, I do taqib, I read Quran, I do it. This is 20 minutes. Because if you think about it, 20, 20 minutes is not a long time. 20 minutes is not a long time in your day. You know, so 20, 20, 20. Let's say one hour of the day. There's a hadith that say, you know, Divide, divide your, your day. Give one hour for yourself, one hour for, for your family, one hour for your work, 
And one hour for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is it not worth one hour for one of your day? Is it not worth it? One hour. When it comes to Fajr, before Fajr you read a bit of Quran. Allahu Akbar. Alright, 20 minutes plus wudu. It's a deal. Go. It's a combination. It's a combo. Wudu plus salat, 20 minutes. It's a beautiful way. It's a beautiful way to, 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 to free yourself. Because within that 20 minutes you sit down, you can let your imagination go wild, you know, you begin to you pray, and then how beautiful is your if you read one page of Quran, one line of Quran a day. You feel blessed. So there are many ways, and of course, my brothers and sisters, wallah, I have no time to talk about the importance and, 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 and the ways of removing. And that's why. I am hoping that my brothers and sisters here are a community that likes to read. Because when it comes to this topic of Salat, we have to read upon all of us, each, even myself. Each and every single one of us. I am now, I'm just going to give you, I'm going to like, you know, I'm going to grow seeds, I'm going to plant seeds within you, and I want you to go read upon it. You must read upon Salat. Because once you read one book, and especially to my younger brothers, once you read one book, on the spiritual etiquette of Salat, and there are many of books in English specifically, and I'm pretty sure there are in Urdu. Once you read one book, your Salat before that book and after that book are completely different. So, leave some time out of the day, go to Urdu, pray, read a bit of Quran, because Salat is Maharaj al -Mur. Salat is where, this is where our Vicar is. This is where our our souls and our hearts ascend towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course, before you begin to pray, the condition of your salat, the condition of the acceptance of your salat is at Purification. This is the condition. I can't come and say, oh, Allahu Akbar, and I haven't done, I haven't done wudu, or I haven't done ghusl. <coughs> I must. And when it comes to purification, Purification is on two levels. Now, I want my brothers and sisters to stay focused. Salah ala Muhammad wa alayhi Muhammad. When it comes to purification, purification is on two levels. At tahara al zahiriya and at tahara al batiniya. So, external purification and internal purification. External purification, like wudu and ghusl. If you have no water, tayammum, for example, that's the external. Inshallah, we'll touch on that after we've spoken a bit on the bottom, the purification, the internal purification. The internal purification is also on three levels. There's three types of internal purification. You have, when you're purifying yourself, you're purifying your akhlaq, your mannerisms, your morals. And that's when you purify your heart <coughs> from certain characteristics that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates. Because there's no point, my brothers and sisters, to go in and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you are considered a liar. Or you're considered a hypocrite. Or you're considered a person who has riyah. Like we said, we mentioned we're talking about akhlaq. When you're praying, for example, and your intention isn't only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your intention is for others as well. You hear a brother coming in or a sister coming in, you hear someone coming in, so you begin to flow your voice and fix your voice and pray slowly and Allah Akbar and read in a certain way. This isn't for Allah SWT. This is for someone else. So you have to purify your heart from this, this quality, this characteristic. Then you have the purification of your theological belief. For example, so Al-Tathir al aqaid you call it in Arabic. When I purify my, purify my heart from certain problems I have within my belief system, I can't, for example, come and begin to pray and I, I believe that Allah SWT is not a just God, for example. Or I don't believe in the Holy Prophet Or I, don't, I, have, I, don't, I, I have a problem with my beliefs in wilaya from Allah or the Ahlul Bayt. Or, you know what, I'm praying but I don't believe in the Akhirah. Purify yourself on that level as well. Study. We are in, unfortunately I heard, I read this uh, 
I don't know if I should be saying this in the one but I'm going to say it anyway. I'm pretty sure it was. But I, I read this, uh, I think it was a Facebook status or a meme, I don't know. But it says, we are in the age of smartphones and dumb people. And the reason why they say we're in the age of smartphones and dumb people is because we don't read anymore. It's unfortunate that we don't read anymore. We're just always on our phones and always playing games. and We don't read. Even when we want to read, unfortunately, they have, they have e-books now. Someone's reading for you. You don't read anymore. You know, someone reads for you. So read. Read upon your, our beliefs. Oh, we were speaking about this the other day. A, a, a brother was, was talking about, you know, oh, I have a brother from an, another sect in Islam, and, you know, how do I answer this question? I told him, bro, you know what our problem is? The problem is we want people to become Shia, and we're not even Shia here. You know? We don't even, we don't even understand what our beliefs are. So purify yourself on a theological level as well. And the, and the last type of purification of the internal self, of your heart, is purifying our hearts, and this is very important as well, by cutting off all of our attachments and our relationships, cutting them all off and only connecting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is portrayed in the story I just said about Ramzan al Salam. His son fell, so it's his son, his loved one. It's, it's completely connected to Allah. Purify yourself on that level. Teach yourself that when it comes to Allah, that's it. That's why you find that Abdul Rahman on the day of Ashura, when he came to Salah, he stood up and he's praying and his companions are behind him. And the narrations say that it was as if that it was raining on them, arrows. Arrows were raining down on them. When it comes to Allah SWT, when it comes to Salah, أَذَكَرْتَ الصَّلَاةِ جَعَلَكَ اللَّهُ مِنَ الْمُصَلِّينَ Like we said, do you remember the Salah? He's talking to his companion, he says, May Allah SWT resurrect you with the ones who are, the prayers, the one who classify themselves. Allah SWT classifies them as al-musallin. The ones who uphold and establish Salah. May Allah SWT resurrect you with them. Now, the fact that we are speaking about purification and wudu, we spoke about the internal level. Now, let's speak a bit more on the external purification, which is wudu. Imam Khomeini speaks about it beautifully. He puts it on a beautiful level. And of course, Imam Khomeini speaks about wudu based on a hadith and narration. So he didn't bring this from his own self. No, through hadith and narrations and Ahlul Bayt, he brought us this beautiful picture. He says, as-salat <laughs> begins when? When you, when you begin your wudu. As soon as you open the tap and you're looking at the water, this water, this is where you begin your salat. This is where Imam Zahra what became yellow and red and purple. His color began to change when he started to look at the water. And why? Why is water so important? And water is extremely important. And it's important because of two aspects. There are two aspects of its importance. Number one, it's <coughs> on one level, Allah SWT says, وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ حَيْءٍ وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ If we have created everything, everything that's alive, everything that can move, everything that can breathe, every, everything that we, that's been created, that's حَيْءٍ, that's alive, is created from water. Its origin is water. <coughs> so water isn't, it's extremely important to every single thing, every single thing, not every being, every single thing that's alive. And on, on another level, Allah SWT says, هو الذي, uh, هو الذي والأرض في ستة أيام. So Allah SWT is the one that created everything. He created the sky and the, the ground. He created the all in six days, obviously, inshallah. And another time we'll speak about what days is it? The days that we think about the 24 hours. What days is it? Six different periods. في ستة أيام وكان عرشه على الماء Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after He created all of this creation, His throne was on water. And when he says throne, in this verse, 
when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says his throne in the Holy Quran in general, Al-Arsh, it doesn't mean the throne like the physical throne that you think of when you, when, when you hear the word throne. He says throne because the throne is a kinaya. Meaning, throne means the power. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's power is over everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's qudra is over everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mulk is of everything. He has, has he, he, he is the malik, al quddus, al aziz, al hakim. Everything. He owns everything. Everything is for him. So when he says, it's as if, I'm not going to do tafsir here, but it's as if you can understand from this verse that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that whoever owns water, Whoever owns water, owns creation. Because in, um, in another verse, what does he say? He says, paraphrase the ayah, he says, Oh mankind, you think you're strong? You think you're this, you think you're that? So I can take away one thing from you, all of creation, I take one thing and you all die. All I have to do is take water. As soon as I take away your privilege to drink water, you're finished. All of creation. And you think, you could walk around with your shoulders puffed up and water, just take away water. So his power extends all of the universe and it's the, as if his power is directly connected with water. Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. So we know the importance of water. And we want to begin our wudu. Allah Khomeini also puts it perfectly. He says, when you're washing your face, by the way, the face in Arabic is called al-wajah. My face is al-wajah. I don't know what it is in Urdu, but it's in Arabic it's al-wajah. Al-wajah in Arabic means wajah al So he faced something, yeah? When you say face, oh, I faced you, so I looked towards you. Yeah? I went towards you. And when you face something, it's like you go, you're like you're going towards it. When you're washing your face, it's as if you are purifying yourself. You're washing away everything, every sin that you have faced, everything that you have wajahed, every dhamb that I have wajahed. Every single dhamb, the sin, the, the maqsi that I have, that has taken place and I have faced it. When I do wudu, I wash my face. I say, Allahumma bayid wajhi yawm taswad al wujuh. I say, okay, everything that I face to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I am purifying my face because of that. Because I know I'm a sinner. I know the bad that I have done. So I wash away. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, Allahumma bayid wajhi, ya Allah, whiten, brighten. That light shed from my face on the day when the, the, fa the faces are dark, which is in the hereafter. When you want to come and wash your hands, your arms, also in, uh, my, uh, my hand, my arm, in Arabic is called al yad. And yad, al yad, in, in Arabic, the, ori the origin of al yad, the meaning of it, means qudra. That's why the Holy Quran says, Yadullah Fawqa Aideen. And the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is over their hands. Not mean, it doesn't mean Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a physical hand. Of course not. They say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you can't say it's physical, it's not physical. There's nothing like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when he says, Yadullah Fawqa Aideen, the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subsides over their power. It's stronger than their power. It's more powerful than, ever, than, than anyone. So when he says al yad, my hand, because my hand is the is the instrument, the tool that I use to carry out my power. As a human being, anything that I want that I want to do, I use my hand to do. Or most times. I, 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 want, I want to say at least 95% of our actions that we carry out, portraying our power, portraying our will, portray, portraying our strength, we use our, our hands. So you're purifying, Ya Allah, every single thing that I have used my willpower for, I've used my strength for, that does not please you, I am purifying it. I'm purifying it from that sin that I've committed with my hands, that I've used my strength towards. And then it comes then then you come to washing 
the head when you're doing masah on your head. Your, your, your forehead, your, your, your head is inside it is the mind, brain, which is the most important part of the matter human's body. This is where, this is where like, this is the central system, you know, this is where everything is carried out. Without this, you're, you're useless, you're nothing. So when you're, you're, you're purified, you're putting your hand on your head and you're, you're, you're doing masah and you're washing your head, you're telling Allah SWT, every single sin that I've thought of, not only carried out, Every sin that I've thought of, any bad way I've, I've, I've thought, any any sin that I've planned out using this mind that you have given me, I purify it, Ya Allah. And then your, your feet, Ya Allah SWT, and anywhere I've walked towards, any sin, any haram, any place that I've walked towards that doesn't please you, Ya Allah, I am purifying myself from that, from that walk itself. Forgive me, Ya Allah. And then you stand. You stand in Salah and you say Allahu Akbar. Of course, after you've done, you've done the intention, you put your hand up, and this is called Takbiratul Ihram. We mentioned this quickly, briefly last two nights ago. We said, when you say Al Ihram, Al Ihram is when in Hajj, is when you have certain rules and you are dis disassociated from the world and you are only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's set rules that you can do and you can't do, and you, you can't smell this, and you, can, you are in Ihram. Takbiratul Ihram, you have entered a state of this connection. Allahu Akbar. And look at the action, my brothers and sisters. You have to put your hand up. <laughs> when a police catches you, it says, put your hands up. Yeah? You put your hands up. Because you're submitting to him. You're submitting to the policeman, the police officer. So when you say, when you stand in front of Allah SWT and you say, Allahu Akbar, you're telling Allah, I submit to you. And now Khomeini says, it says, and the back of your hand, you know what that means? When this, this, this behind you, says, Ya Allah, when you say Allahu Akbar, Allah is greater, because I'm saying, Allah, I've put everything behind me, and you are greater than all. Anta Akbar min kulli shay. Allah is greater than everything, says so Allahu Akbar. And then you begin to recite the Fatiha, the Surah, and then you go into the Quran. Rukua is a beautiful state where you tell Allah, I am, I am, I am, not only am I disconnecting myself from the world, Ya Allah, but I, am, but I am bowing down to you because no one else deserves to be bowed to except for you, Ya Allah. Bowing is a state of a, of a servant, a servant bows. A servant bows to his master. And salat is 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 the is the best image of a of a servant. It's the best image of a abd. So I bow to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm your servant. And then I say Allahu Akbar and I go into sujood. And sujood, my brothers and sisters, is where I'm putting, like we said before, the most precious part of my body, the most precious part of my life, which is my mind and my brain. I'm putting it on the ground, on the sand, on the turba. And I'm putting my backside on top. Even my backside doesn't even deserve to be on the same level as my mind. And I put my mind down. And yeah, Allah SWT, I am all for you. And you do two such that, yeah? Yeah, Allah, from this clay we came, in the first sajda, in the second sajda, yeah, Allah, to this clay we will return. I came from here, and I will return to here. And Ya Allah, I am in sujood to you. I have disconnected my, my world. It's all for you. No one will do such that to anyone but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why it was so hard for Iblis. That's why Iblis thought he could be a mu'min more than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him, I want you to isjud li Adam. Do sujood for Adam. And he tells him, I'm going to do sujood for him. I only do sajda for you, Ya Allah. Only for you. And he says, I'm telling you, I want you to do sajda for him. He says, You created him from clay and me from fire. I'm more special than him. And you want me to do sajda to him? No. 
So pride came into its way. Now, so this is this is sort of, like I said. Obviously, we can't get too deep into it and speak about it on all its levels and all its dimensions. Even every single word that I said today, you could probably open on 10, 15 lectures on every word. That's how deep it is. But you find Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi when it comes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, we find he, he posed so much importance on Salah. It was, it was his Salah. You, you find that most of the hadith that you hear about Rasulullah sallallahu was always in the masjid, always praying. And he always used to say that this salat is the ornament, is the is the pearl, is is everything of the mu'min. He is, and and when this the hadith also state in the narrate, they say that when Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam would pray, nothing is worth, nothing in the world. لو اجتمع العالم, if the whole world came together and tried all of the world, the whole world, if all the world of Mu'mini and Muslim, and they tried to do one takbir like Rasulullah Muhammad, they wouldn't be able to. No one would be able to, even they tried all together to do one takbir, Allahu Akbar, like Rasulullah, they wouldn't be able to. No one would be able to connect to Allah SWT the same way. And that's why, when they come and ask Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they say, oh, what made you? What what's so special about Ahlul Bayt? What's so special about you? Sorry about it was uh, one of the Imams Ali Al Salam. Imam Al Sadiq Ali Al Salam. He asks him, Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He asks Imam Al Sadiq Ali Al Salam, one of his close close companions, of course. He, tell, he tells him, you know, you know, you don't do sin and whatnot. What's the difference between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Now, he says this hadith, he says this, but of course, this is the epitome of the, of the difference. He says, لا فرق بيننا وبينه إلا أننا عباده This is the only difference and the biggest difference between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the thing that differentiates a servant. He says, we are the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are, the, we are the ibad of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we know that if the Ahlul Bayt wanted to say this is haram, because Rasulullah does not do anything or say anything that is not Quran. He does not do anything or say anything that is not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every single action of Rasulullah and the Ahlul Bayt, awwaluna Muhammad wa akhiruna Muhammad, bal kulluna Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala so the Ahl al-Bayt would never do anything that was outside the line of, of the Sharia. They were the ones that made Sharia through the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this is haram. That's why, for example, when it comes to Allah alayhi salam, one of them asks Salman, a man asks Salman al-Muhammad, he says, if you were to see Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam drinking alcohol, what would you do? He says, I'll drink alcohol. Why? He says, because Rasulullah said, He says, Aliyun ma'al haq, wal haq ma'ali. He says, Ali is with haq, he's with the truth. And not only is he with the truth, the truth is with Ali alayhi salam. Yadur ma'ahu haythu ma'dar. Everywhere he turns, everywhere he looks, Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, haq is with him. This is the Ahl Bayt alayhi this is Rasulullah Sallallahu And when it comes to a man like Ali Al-Akbar Alayhi Salaam, the son of Abu Abdul Al Fusa Alayhi Salaam, they say, Abu Fusa Alayhi Salaam says, when we were to miss the picture of Rasulullah, when we were to miss the akhlaq of Rasulullah, when we were to miss the mannerisms of Rasulullah, when we were to miss the, the speech of Rasulullah, we would look at Ali Al-Akbar Alayhi Salaam. Kana ashbahu al-khalq, li Rasulullah khalqan wa khulq was the most similar in comparison than any other human being to Rasulullah with his actions and with his face he used to look like Rasulullah 
and his morals, Ali Akbar alayhi salam, the son of Abu Tan salam, his morals with his father and with his parents were beyond this world. And Abdullah alayhi salam, because of the man he is, because of this, because of this, the special character that he has, says, I will bring my companions and I'll bring my family to Karbala, but the first one to, do, to, to be a Mati would be my son. The first one to be Mati, the first one to be a Shaheed from Bani Hashim was Ali al Abba He comes to his father and he begs him, Ya Abba Please, my father, let me go fight. Let me go fight. Let me be your shaheed. Let me be the first one. فَنَظَرَ إِلَيْهِ Imam Hussain alayhi salam then looks at his son. He says, my son, Ali, عَلَى الدُّنْيَا الْعَفَى بَعْدَكَ يَا عَلِي he says, this dunya is worth nothing after you, my son, my brothers and sisters. The fathers here will understand, the mothers here will understand the tragedy of Ali Akbar alayhi salam. When you're connected so much to your son, Ali salam is connected. He loved his son, Ali. Especially that he used to remind him of his grandfather, Rasulullah sallallahu Please, my father, give me permission to go fight for you. And then he says, Allahumma shahad faqad barza ilayhim ghulamun. Oh Allah witness that, that my son Ali alayhi salam would be the first to go and fight. Qadab faqad abraz barza ilayhim. Qila ghulamun ashbahu nas khulqan wa khalqan wa mantiqan bi rasulik ya Allah. He tells him, he says, Ya Allah, this is the man that look like, looks like your, your, your Prophet. This is the man that acts like your Prophet. This is the man that has the exact same morals of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Ya Allah, be witness that he will be the first one martyred in your cause. Fasah wa qawah, ibn Sa'd, qata Allah rahmah, kama qata rahmi. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam then screams to Umar ibn Sa'd and he tells him, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cut off your lineage, cut off, cut off your, brief, your offspring, the same way you have done to me. And then Ali al Akbar alayhi salam began to say his farewells to the woman. They began to cry, and they began to say, We can't handle life without you, Ya Ali. He was like that man that everyone used to love, that everyone awaited. And then you find, then you find Ali, alayhi salam. He cries and he tells them, I have to leave. He lives. He gets him onto the battlefield and he begins to scream. He says, he gets on the battlefield and he says, I am Ali, the son of Hussein, the son of Ali. We are the holy, holy household of the Holy Prophet. And I will fight you, and I will fight you with my sword until my sword breaks. I will attack you with my steel, with my spear until my spear breaks. And I will fight you, the soldier of Bani Hashem. قالوا فلم يخرج إليه أحد إلا قتل. Every man that would come and fight Ali al Akbar عليه السلام, Ali al Akbar would attack and kill him. إلى أن دع عمر بن سعد 
Brothers and sisters, this man comes to fight Ali al Akbar alayhi salam, and Imam Hussain alayhi salam is standing at the tent and he's watching. And as he watches, the mother of Ali al Akbar, Layla alayhi salam, looks at her. She is trying to translate the battle in front of her by looking at the facial reactions of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. فنظرت إلى وجهه تراه يتلألأ نورا وسرورا بشجاعة ولد She sees the face of Imam Hussain alayhi salam and he's happy and he's smiling فبينما هو كذلك وإذا بوجه الحسين قد تغير لونا And as she looks at his face and then his face changes color She tells him say it she tells him, my master, I see your face has changed color. Is there anything that has happened to my son Ali? He tells her, oh, oh, Layla. ولكن برز إليه من يخاف منه عليه. Then he says, oh, no, Layla, nothing has happened to him yet. But a man came to attack and fight Ali, and this man is a fearsome warrior. He tells her, mothers, listen to this, my mothers. He tells her, ma asna. She tells, he tells her, ya Layla, ad'i li waladik, fa inna, fa in, fa inni sam'atu jaddi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi yaqool, inna dua al-um, my mother, listen to this, please listen to this. He tells her, Layla, I want you to do something. I heard my grandfather, Rasulullah, say that the dua of a mother towards her child is accepted. So pray for our son Ali. She went into the tent. She puts her hands up. She raises them to the sky. She begins to pray. She begins to say, إلهي بغربة أبي عبد الله إلهي بعطش أبي عبد الله يا أراد يوسف إلى يعقوب أردت علي ولدي علي she goes back into the tent and begins to swear she begins to say oh Allah I swear to you by the loneliness of Abu Abdullah, by the thirst of Abu Abdullah, Oh Allah, you returned Yusuf to Jacob. Please return to me, my son Ali. Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted her dua. Ali alayhi salam comes back. ولكن بأي حال How does he come back? What's his state? رجعا إلهي وهو ينادي أبا العطش قد قتلني He comes back and he begins to scream My father The thirst is beginning to kill me And the metal The heat of the metal The armor is burning me there is no drop of water. Ya Allah, Sayyid Alayhi Salaam says, Wa walada. As soon as he says that, all the women begin to cry. They begin to scream, Wa Aliya. Ya Allah, Sayyid Alayhi Salaam tells him, My son, my son, it hurts me that you're thirsty. It hurts me. My fathers, my mothers, you know, you understand this when you see your son sick, huh? He tells him, my son, I can't bear to see you in this state. Go back and fight. And insha'Allah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, he will quench your thirst with, a, with water that you will never be thirsty after drinking. ولكن بنيرا قبل أن تمضي اذهب إلى أمك ليلى. But my son, before you leave, go 
وبهت يمضى أدفى وهو Because her heart is shattered for you. ذهب الأكبر إلى الخيمة. الأكبر عليه السلام goes back to his mother to the tent. And he sees her, she is crying. Crying. It's as if his mother, he comes down and bends towards his mother. He puts his hand, his head in her lap. And he begins to scream, Mama, His mother had fainted, she had fallen unconscious, huh? And he puts his head in her lap, and she begins to scream, Mama, answer me. I don't want to kill Ali. I am your son, Ali. And she opened her eyes and she looked at her son and her tears began to run down her cheeks. عاد علي الأكبر إلى الميدان وجعل يقاتل قتال الأبطال. My brothers and sisters, Ali al-Akbar alayhi salam goes back to the battlefield and he begins to fight one after the other until hundreds of people, hundreds of people from the enemy side come to him. They surround him, they begin to throw arrows at him. They begin to hit him until at one stage he falls off his horse. <coughs> Brothers and sisters, the narrators say that Ali al his face is all blood, he can't see in front of him. To the extent where the blood would drip down onto the horse, uh, the horse can't see in front of him anymore. And then the horse wants to be do good, his ho the horse wants to take him back to the tent of Abu Abdullah al Hussein. And the horse can't see in front of him. Uh, so, when does he, the horse take him? The Ali Ali Abu has fell, he is now hanging on the side of the horse, and the horse is going towards the enemy, the tent of the enemy. Uh, and then the enemy is being Begin to hit Ali al Akbar alayhi salam. And then the horse goes and he drops Ali al Akbar alayhi salam. My brothers and sisters, I want you to close your eyes. I want you to picture this scenario. Huh? When you're thirsty and your throat is dry, you can't scream out loud. Ali al Akbar alayhi salam is where. Is where he's on the battlefield next to the enemy. Imam al Hussein is where in his tents. For those who have been to Karbala, understand what I mean by how far he is. And for those who have been to Karbala, inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you the blessing of being in Karbala this year, inshallah. Ali al Akbar alayhi salam falls onto the ground. Ali al Akbar alayhi salam is thirsty, his mouth is dry. Ali al Akbar alayhi salam has sand in his mouth. My brothers and sisters, he's unable to scream about uh, He's unable to scream about Abdullah. What does he say? Uh, uh, he whispers. He whispers with a very short voice, my brothers and sisters. Very, very low voice. He says, Assalamu alaikum, ya Allah. Brothers and sisters, as soon as he hears this, as soon as Abdullah hears this, it's a whisper. Huh? A whisper. For the one in Karbala that can hear the whisper of his son, as far as he was, my brothers and sisters, inshallah, he can hear us when we say, Assalamu alaikum, Ya Abu Abdullah. He says, Wa alaikum, Assalamu alaikum, Ya Waladi. Peace be upon you, my son. As soon as, as soon as Abu Abdullah hears this, it's as if he's saying, Ali Akbar salam is telling his father, Oh father, oh father, this is Rasulullah and he has come and quenched my thirst. Brothers and sisters, Abu Abdullah alayhi salam, when he goes back, when he goes to his son Ali alayhi salam, what does he do? He shows us the epitome of fatherhood. He shows us the beauty of love. Not like these movies that we watch. He shows us what love really is between the father and the son. He goes 
he goes towards the body of his son. But as when he came to his companions, he'd sit with them, his companions would ask him, bring them John, for example, tell me, please purify my soul, purify me with your breath, Ya Aba Abdullah. Another would say, Ya Aba Abdullah, put your cheek on my cheek. Another would say, Ya, ya Aba Abdullah, kiss my forehead. Another would say, Ya Aba Abdullah, put my head in your lap. When Aba Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam reaches his son Ali, what does he do, my brothers and sisters? His father, he lays down and he falls asleep. He falls a false unconsciousness next to the body of his son Ali. He falls unconscious next to his son Ali and he screams, Ala dunya al-afa ba'dak ya Ali. This is a line he has said no to no one else. <laughs> Only to Ali Akbar. He says, my son, after you, there is no point of life after you, Ya Ali. And then as he begins to scream, and he begins to cry for his son, who hears him? Zainab alayhi salam. And then he goes back to the tent. He tells the companions, he tells the companions and the, the rest of Bani Hashem to go and get Ali al Akbar alayhi salam. My sisters, this is for you. Huh? Zainab alayhi salam comes out. And she sees him out for saying in such a stand. She tells him, Ya Abu Abdullah. He tells her, What are you doing outside of the tent, Ya Zainab? He tells her, She tells him, I fear, I fear for your state, oh my brother. He tells her, Zainab, as much as I love my son Ali, alayhi salam, but your hijab is more important than my son Ali. Your modesty, Ya Zainab, is more important than my son Ali. My sisters and my brothers, beware of your modesty. This is Abba Abdullah Hussain salam speaking. Uh, and then, uh, 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 they come to the, the, the companions go to Ali. They want to bring his body back. Uh, uh, they bring him back. وَبَلَّبُ وَبَدَأَتُ نَادِئُ عَلِيَّ زَيْنَبْ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامُ began to scream Oh Ali, Wa Ali The Layla, the mother of Ali عليه السلام comes out and she begins to cry Imagine looking at your son in such a state She looks at her son مُرَمَّلًا بِالْدِّمَاءِ she looks at her son, he is shredded into pieces, he is shredded into pieces, his, his face is all bloody, she couldn't even recognize him. I say, Ya Aba Abdullah, when it comes to your son Ali, you have people to come and pick him up and take him to the tent. But Aba Abdullah al Hussein, when it came to the tenth day of Muharram, on that eve, what, what happened to you, Ya Aba Abdullah? Who was there to pick you up? Who was there to carry you? The narration states when Zainab Abidin alayhi salam came back to pick up his father, Hussein. He said he will try and pick him up from one side, the right side would fall. He would try and pick him up from the right side, the left side would fall. And then he couldn't pick up the, the pieces of his father, Hussein. <laughs> Abu Abdullah was shredded into pieces. They had to pick him up in the cross, my brothers and sisters. <laughs>
Brothers and sisters, let's raise our hands in the world. For what are oppressed people in the world, especially in countries like Yemen, in Pakistan, in Palestine, in Syria, and in Burma, the Shia, our Shia brothers in Burma, the other For the scores that have passed, for the martyrs that are being dropped every day, for the ones who are wounded, for the ones who are sick in Shaman, and get better. Let's recite the five times all together. Bismillah <laughs> ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Amma jibun Arrayna al-Aam Jishishun Amma jibun Arrayna al-Aam Jishishun Amma jibun Arrayna al-Aam Amma jibun Ya Allah, 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 Ya اللهم بحقهم اللهم بحقهم شرع مع أبا عبد الله الحسين عليه السلام My brothers and sisters Allah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your tea Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your dua Please recite the Lord salawat ala Muhammadin wa ahalim 